Hey everyone, this is Chris Tabron. Today I'm going to show you how I use CR8 and a weird old voice note to make this beat. So a lot of times when I'm making a record or working with an artist, voice notes are sort of our little idea machines in our notebooks these days. And I heard this weird mumbly thing that I had recorded actually from the speakers in the studio. And that was basically this. So it's been like formant shifted and pitched all over the place and, and it's kind of crazy. And the only thing that I've really done with it here is I've got good old retrofy on it to make it sound even more lo-fi than it is. Uh, NLS bus, give me a little bit of saturation here. And C4, there's some nastiness in the high mids that I'm just taming there. And then the rest of this is CR8. So this is actually just a tom sample that comes with Cosmos, uh, Tom Tape Funk 03. It's gonna respond to how hard I hit the pad, right? So I can actually make a melodic element out of what's usually an atonal kind of thing. It's gonna sound like this. Next is kick. Nasty, smacky kick that's got plenty of lows in it and, and we all need that in our lives. Here's how the kick and the tom are playing off each other rhythmically. I want to actually play the snare for you first before we get into the hats. So I tuned it down three. Once I have three kind of elements going, usually it's kick, snare, hat. That's when I adjust the filters in the sampler. And so I'm just going to play this down and I'm going to tweak these filters and make sure that I'm liking what they're doing. Great, yeah, so basically the filter, I'm just taking off the top, top fizziness of that snare so that it sits and kind of feels like it belongs a bit more with the rest of the beat. So one thing that I do when I'm when I'm programming hats, which it's specifically nice in Ableton when I have the push, is go in note repeat mode, and so you have, and then I kind of will just punch in a roll this way, which is what I've done here. So here's that what that pattern sounds like on its own. And as you probably heard, good old Metaflanger never lets you down. I feel like I've been using this plugin since the 70s. Uh, <laughs> something about the hats that I want to adjust, and that's usually what I do here on this panel in Ableton, the delay panel. And I'm just going to play it down and lay them back a little bit so that the hats relate a little bit more relaxed in terms of how, the, how they're relating to the tom. Yeah, I like that. 100 samples or so seems to seems to do the trick there. Finally, 808, got to have it. So let me just play it without the plugins that I have on it. Uh, this one is an 808 that I've been using for a while, and uh, you will have this sample too. So this that's this. Nothing too fancy, but it gets the job done. And also speaking of getting the job done, one knob pumper. I just wanted that ex extended note to kind of create some movement in the low end, so that's doing this. And MDMX Overdrive. So let me hear that on its own. Sounds like a lot of distortion, but in the track, it's actually going to just help it punch through on smaller systems. So here we go with the whole track. So that's basically how I can use CR8 really quickly. I like how I can search through samples and, and everything is laid out really easily and I can just take something that was a sketch in a long forgotten section of my voice notes on my phone and now I've got a track start here that I can actually evolve into a song and start making different sections. And again, it's about speed and also using a lot of the samples that are there already. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. And it's more about how the feel of different percussive elements are relating to each other rather than spending all day looking for samples. Hope you found this useful. I hope you can use some of these samples and some of these tricks that I had and make something cool your own. Thanks.